Lennox Lewis and his title defense against David Tua. Eight-year age advantage for Tua. a near-perfect record. His only loss came in a spectacular war with Ike Bayabuchi, in which they broke a CompuBox record for most punches by heavyweights. The decision could have gone either way. He's waited two years for this shot at the heavyweight title. celebration of Lennox Lewis's Jamaican heritage. Am I right, Jim? I think you're right. And of course, he can choose from a, choose from a wide range of heritages to celebrate. The only thing that's missing here is a nod to Canada, the nation for which he won the Olympic gold medal in 1988. Globalization to the max in heavyweight boxing. Lennox Lewis has lost only once. The stunning second round TKO at the hands of Oliver McCall six years ago. And the one draw with Evander Holyfield in Madison Square Garden that almost all ringside observers saw as a victory for Lewis. 29 KOs. And the record is not too dissimilar to that of Tua. Just the level of competition in the last two years, which greatly favors Lewis. From South Auckland, New Zealand, Ladies and gentlemen, the universally recognized number one ranked heavyweight contender in the world, here is Tua Man, David Tua. Since he captured Olympic gold in 1988, his professional record now stands at 37 victories, including 29 by knockout, with only a one loss and one draw. Presenting the two-time world champion, the universally recognized reigning and defending undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. When I say break, I want you to break clean. I don't want any rough tactics, unnecessary fouling. Understand, guys? I give me good sportsman like conduct. And remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. You just want the best two heavyweights in the world in to show us what they Get got. The referee is trying to establish right now corner. who is the boss. And it's very important that he establish it. Well, this is the man you call the rest, best referee in the sport, George. So if anybody can do it, he can. Nearly a thousand Tua supporters flew in from New Zealand. Another few hundred from Samoa. Lewis's supporters have come in from England and from Canada. It's a truly international event at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Lennox begins trying to establish his jab, and Tua leaps forward with a left hook, his trademark punch, to begin the action. Tua has got to make certain that when he gets him against the rope, he misses him. Don't throw unless your feet are right there, too. Lewis landed his first right cross. The second one was short. Tua has already shown you his great chin. Oh. Lennox Lewis better home. realize that the best punch in boxing is still the left jab. The body punching is not going to help Lewis because he's going to run into a lot of elbows down there. You want to keep the jab, open up the head. With the you got to drop him to throw your right hand, as they are now. That, light, that right hand is down. Keep it there. Early in the round, Tua came steaming out. Lewis hit him with a couple of good punches. And now Tua is being a little bit more careful as he comes in. 
And we haven't seen the uppercut yet, which Lennox believes may be the great equalizer when Tua tries to rush it. Finally, David gets a glove on Lennox as he lands a little bit of a left up around the shoulder. Lewis with another body shot. And it was only in the Franz Volta fight, his last defense, that we began to see him even thinking of throwing punches to the body. You gotta land some body punches when you're fighting a puncher because he only can stay strong if you don't. Take some of the air out of the, out of the balloon. Hi. It would be hard to give round one to Tua. He landed one punch by my lights. Round one, a CompuBox landslide for Lewis. He threw 73 punches. He landed 20 jabs. Tua got credit for four of 34 from the CompuBox observers. Round two begins with Lewis sticking the jab, sticking the jab, sticking the jab, sticking the jab. Stick it, stick it, stick it. Tua can't mount an attack. Tua's got to do some intimidation, run into him, make him think that, hey, you're a coward, so that he can start throwing right and left. The jab, he can beat him all night with it. He got in one punch to the rib cage a moment ago. Right hand from Lewis, not thrown very hard. Now Lewis is falling into the bad trap. You don't want to drop your hand anywhere near the rope. If you're going to drop your hands, make sure you're in the middle of the ring so you have at least four steps backwards. And just as you said that, of course, Tua took advantage and landed a right and a left. But you got to do something to make Lewis want to fight. There you are. That's the punch that's going to make Lewis decide, I'm getting even. Left hook by Tua. And another left hook by Tua. And a vicious left to the belly. So Tua begins to mount his attack now midway through round two. Lewis with a right hand and a left. Lewis. Tua missing. Lewis popped him quickly with the jab. Lewis got to make certain this stays the left hand, left jab. Lennox seems to have regained his concentration. And Tua hits him with the right hand. The Tua supporters in the crowd going wild as Lewis lands a very low blow. You're looking at the cautious, tactical Lennox Lewis. This is why he does not arouse the passions of boxing fans in the way that great heavyweight champions might hope to do. But if he's able to get that jab working, he can excite me. Jab your way. Keep your title with a left jab. If that's the only punch you can land, use it. Well, what he succeeded in doing in this round is messing up to his hair and just landing more punches. And landing a right hand, which Tua answered with a leaping left as the second round came to a close. But it was, you know, it wasn't that bad of a low blow. Hey, that was a low blow, Larry. But it was low. And at the end of the round, a leaping punch that gets Lewis on the nose. On the nose. <laughs> Right on the nose. The fight is going the way Tua wanted to go. Jab, keep this guy running from you. Keep him running. Make him afraid to throw his right hand. Round two was another lopsided copy box round for Lewis. Harold Letterman gave it to Tua, no doubt on the basis of his aggression and that left hook that he landed at the end. That's what will excite the Tua followers. He's moving now successfully to Tua's uh, right and jabbing. So the way to move for Lennox is to his own left, to Tua's right. And just keep your jab going. When you come back over to that left hand, he's going to interrupt you and it's going to hurt you. There you are. There's Don't go over on that down. side. Stay away from that side. It doesn't take much for Tua's supporters to get overwhelmingly excited. There he's able to land a couple of shots to the body as Lewis moves off the ropes. Once again, Lewis moves to left. He's got to keep his movement to, to his right. If you want to clown, clown to his right. Hard right, shots to the body, and now Joe Cortez tells Tua to keep him up. Lewis is doing too much waiting. You throw your shots, you train, don't be conservative. Let him go. When Lennox Lewis gets into trouble, it's often because he waits and does not stay aggressive with his jab. He threw 65 punches around during the first two rounds, and most of them were jabs. But now he's slowing the pace in round three. Now Lewis is throwing shots. That's what you want to do. 
it's a lot easier to throw shots and take the power off of them and be accurate than it is to wait around for a good hard shot. And now for the first time, Lewis grabs David and holds him. And the two of crowd moves because they know that their man might be susceptible if Lennox wants to tie him up inside. Ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. How do you have it through the first three? Okay, Jim. Well, first of all, let me say this much. At the beginning of the fight, you have to start the fight in the corner. Joe Cortez was right by moving it back into the corner. 28, 29, 29, 28, David Tua. Two rounds to one, David Tua. I just don't see any snapping. Lennox Lewis is left chair. He sticks it out. There's no snapping it. Lewis started out aggressively. That's what you want to do. Make this little guy try to protect himself a little bit. He's making you keep your hand up. Make him keep his hand up and think, I may get hurt. George, you said earlier that he's coming to get to get Lewis's title. That's right. I mean, but he's not coming hard enough. Yeah, but Lewis touches when he gets into the rope. Tua has to have five shots waiting. Well, but that's what I'm saying. He doesn't seem to be coming after it yet, but he's to come on very strongly. You know, and it's strange because he is not close enough. But they still may feel as though their man, with his constant aggression, the body shots. And the fact that he lands more thunderously through the first three rounds than Lennox is winning the fight yeah, and is doing what they want him to do. But in order to throw these, this punch, that punch, he must be close enough. And that's what he's trying to do. And Lewis is doing a good job of not allowing him to get close. Now, when you miss a big hook like that, that's five miles of your road work. Here's a sequence of left hooks where Tua misses, misses, and then... Well, the reason he's not throwing the left hand is because, frequently enough is because he just can't get there yet. He can't get close enough yet. And also in the first round. The round four of Lewis's 80 connected punches, 60 were jabs. Tua with an edge of 27 to 20 in power shots. That's what Harold Letterman was talking about in giving two of the first three rounds to date. In fact, Lewis considerably more cautious early than you might have expected after the total dominance of his title defense performances against Grant and Bota. But Emmanuel Stewart has been saying all along, this is a different kettle of fish. This is an entirely more dangerous opponent. Oh, right hand by Lewis. I mean, he zeroed in real low because Tua decided to stand straight for a second as he followed him. If you're gonna follow a punch around, you better be hitting him. Leaping on top of Tua and holding him as he found himself in the corner. And there's another right hand that he pops David on the top of the head with. Well, it sure looks like a comfort level at this He's moment. comfortable now. When he He's even closer hands. with his left jab than he had been on there. He's getting close with it now. He's you don't want him to believe that he can get that close to you. The champion is starting to throw his right hand with much greater frequency here in this round. Tua pops him upstairs with his own right. George Lewis hasn't used a single uppercut, and it was a hugely effective punch for him, particularly in the second Holyfield fight. Is he waiting to set it up? Yeah, he's waiting. Two is moving his head, going duck and dodging. You don't want to hurt your hand, so he's trying to do it accurately. And sometimes, if you just throw it, you'll be surprised the punch is there for you. One of the problems Tua has is that he's throwing one punch at a time. He's not trying to put anything together yet. Lewis looking tactically in control now toward the end of round five as David Tua misses, misses, and Lewis pops him with the counter right. Body shots by Tua there. Lewis Shot. with a low blow, and then he sticks to it twice with the jab. No warning for body. Cortez. Going to the body. You heard Emmanuel Stewart say to Lewis, you were fighting a masterpiece in that round. He Second makes out. Lewis Three miss, corner. and then he makes him pay. Tua, Tua misses. Time, time, time. Hey, get, get in that corner. Get in that corner. Hey, get in that corner. He wants both fighters get to go to corner. neutral corners. Let's listen up. Uh, it's referee, or it's uh, Nevada State Athletic Commissioner Mark Ratner is overseeing the refastening of the buckles in the blue corner, David Tua's corner. Does this favor it, somebody, it. George? Okay. Yeah. No, it doesn't favor either guy okay. now because if Tua had get something going. Here. He's Let's lost, go. and if Lewis has something, right. he's lost. All right. Let's go. Well, if Tua was counting on... Now you go. you got to be reckless. Lead with your hooks. You can't just decide, I'm going to... 
tactically take the title away from a good champion like this. Yeah, it's hard to imagine, even though Harold Letterman has two ahead on the scorecards, it's really hard to imagine Tua winning a tactical boxing match. It can't happen. You feel as though he's got to use his artillery. Lewis is throwing that right hand just like a guy on the pitcher's mound. Sitting there and coming off that mound with it. That's what brings in a lot of power that Tua may not have tasted before because this guy comes from on high with this thing. Now Lewis back to the round one action. Pop, pop, pop with the jab. David Tua is, is just looking for the one shot, it appears. You know, you know, you know, I don't know if you can beat Lennox Lewis that way unless you happen to land it square on the jaw. There was a big feeling, as you were starting to get to a moment ago, Larry, in Tua's camp, that Lewis lacked stamina, and they'd be able to wear him down over a long haul. Now, Lewis would try to pay him back. This is the fight Tua wants. Make him try to pay you back and hit you back. Lewis had better stick to his strategy and forget about it being being hit that time. It would appear that if Tua is going to make Lewis his stamina a factor in the fight, he's going to have to step up his activity level. Yeah. This was the best left hook that Tua landed in the fight. Just step over there. You know, there, there were concerns that 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 hair might get into Lewis's eyes. It appears to be coming almost down into Tua's own eyes. I don't think. Look where the hair is. Uh, he's almost probably spars like that all the time. Once you see him take his glove and move his hair backwards, then you know something's going wrong. Hadn't happened yet. Five. Has no trouble punching downward, George. No, he picks that head up, jabs it, and the head comes up, and he throws the right hand. Well, both Tua better keep his head a little lower. Even when he's jabbing, make him hit your forehead right up, up top. Both corners have told their fighters to be more assertive in this round. Let's see what happens. Harold, how do you have it through six? Oh, get you. Three rounds apiece, 57-57. And Ronnie Shields uh, didn't seem to think that David Tua was even in the fight. He told him in no uncertain terms after round six, you're losing the fight. They want more activity from Tua. Looking at David Tua here, you find it hard to imagine that against Ike Bayabuchi three years ago, or four years ago, he was in the heavyweight fight, which broke the copy box record for most punches thrown in 10 rounds. I guess it's hard to throw a lot of punches against Lennox Luke. But he's just, he doesn't appear to be as quick as he did a couple of years ago. Larry is not the way this guy Lewis is moving to Tua's right hand. Moving to his right hand, his left hook, is, he can't get anything started off of the right side. Want him to move him to his left, and he's jabbing him. That's the problem here. So that's the reason that a guy who threw 75 punches around against Ibeabuchi is throwing 35 punches around against Lewis. Lewis jabs him, touches him with his hand, and when, when Tua looks up, he's too far away. Generally, when a guy hits you, he's close. Now, this isn't pretty. Boxing fans don't love to see it. They want to see the sustained aggression. But Lennox Lewis showed you in both Holyfield fights that he's perfectly happy to win tonight and look sensational the next time. Well, why, why should he go and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the shorter, very strong fighter and give the other fighter his best chance? Only so that he doesn't have to read in the newspapers tomorrow that he's dull. You know what? I don't think he cares. He's, I think he doesn't. I think you're right. He, he, he's, he's fighting the kind of fight that got him here. He's he, landed most of the big blows in this fight. Including a right hand right there. Remember, Tua has the puncher's chance. And we said that early on, the puncher, all he has is the punch. In his four biggest fights against David Aizan, Moskayev, Ibeabuchi. Hold, 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 hold. Oh, 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 my man. And Rockman, he was well behind going into the last third of the fight. So you can't count him out. That was the second warning from Cortez to Tua for low blows, and a deducted point in a fight like this could be very big. And now falls back into the rhythm of following Lewis around and takes another right hand. Sometimes they keep the left, the right foot too far behind him. Just step on up there, step on up you to know, the plate. He's got to get in there and brawl. He's oh, got to get in there and throw there. punch after punch. And he's standing back, most of his weight on his right foot. You've got to get closer. Step up in there, put the feet together. He's not throwing more than one punch at a time, being tentative, in part because Lewis is out of his range. I mean, it's not, it's not because- Now he's you know, on the ropes, jumping, jumping. There you go. 
Cortez watching closely, but I must say, Lennox is taking the body shots without showing in any ill effects whatsoever. Because he's standing right within his rhythm. He's not doing anything that he need not do to cause him to breathe hard. Now Lennox, well, he should have tapped. He should have tapped. On and Tua leaves him alone, and Lennox steps right back away from it. Once you get close, you stay close. Could it be, George, that David Tua is just too afraid of Lennox Lewis's right hand to be himself in there? No doubt about it, but he's, he's tasted some of that right hand, and he should be afraid. But Tua has a great chin. No, but not coming from upstairs. Punches. This right hand that Lewis has comes from another direction. It's like dropping a, a pin from a 20-story <laughs> building. There's a long right hand lands for Lewis right after the jab. Classic one-two. Jab and move. Jab and move. Jab, move to the left. Jab, move to the left. Lewis is not breathing hard. Tua is not putting the pressure on to make him breathe hard. Shakes, bakes, doesn't do anything else. The fight bears a fair resemblance to the first Evander Holyfield fight in Madison Square Garden. I'll bet you the copy box numbers aren't all that different either. Lennox Lewis is giving a boxing lesson to David Tua through two thirds of this heavyweight championship fight. The chronically placid <laughs> exterior of the heavyweight champion from Kitchener, Ontario, in London, England, Lennox Lewis. And you heard what Ronnie Shields thinks about the fight. Yeah, this is the point where Tua has always come on in the past in his tough fights. Now, Tua has him up against him. He's not doing a thing. I just can't understand all of the training and the training camps. Would he have that much fear of Lennox's right no, hand? No, he's just at the left jab. He does not want to be hit with that left jab. Who cares? You can't come out of these fights looking pretty. You're going to have to get some scratches on you, and that's the only way you're going to do it with Lewis. you got to sacrifice. The minutes are passing, and it doesn't appear Tua has a chance of winning a fight like this. He needs he to has the puncher's chance. If only he would assert himself. Just go get it. Well, lots of guys, no shortage. Oliver McCall, Henry Akinwande have gone into the ring with big talk against Lennox Lewis and then have produced nothing. And, and you have to wonder how many of them have been intimidated by the size and the right hand of the champion. Boom! Big combination, and Tua smiles. You know why? Because he was hurt. That's why. But that's that left hook that Lennox Lewis have added to his repertoire. Yep. Tua's got to be involved. Once those exchanges start, he's got to mix it up. That means Lewis is close enough. Go! Oh, big left hook for Tua. Yeah, but he had his, it went right into Lewis's glove. Lewis has got that right glove planted to his face. He knows that the left hook is, is uh, David's virtually his only chance. It's his only weapon. Even now, Lewis is pursuing a knockout. Yeah, I think his confidence is rising minute to minute as he realizes that he's just not going to see this storm of aggression that Tua and his people promised. Left jab, still the best punch in boxing, as I said earlier. You use a left jab, you can shut down anybody. This is becoming target practice at this point. Let it go, let it go clean, let it go, let it go. Tua's face beginning to swell just as Holyfield's face swelled in the first fight with Lewis. Show us again how Lennox blocks David's left hook. Yeah, well, Lewis has him where he wants him now because David wants to come in, is looking to come in, and Lewis knows it. But here, as you saw, as I said earlier, his right hand. David too is going to beat him. He's going to try to make him beat him with something else with the left hook. That's great. If you, if if a team has a great passing attack. Fighting for the title, you can't be afraid to get knocked out. That's and the there's point. the uppercut for the first time, and it wobbles to him. Look, Lewis landed the right, came back with the uppercut. Best combination of the fight, Tua rolled into the ropes. And there, Lewis gives Tua a chance by getting aggressive, and Tua finally lands a big That's what Tua really wants. Although you may get hurt, but you want those exchanges so that you can get yours in, too. Don't take anything from Lennox Lewis tonight. He's winning this boxing match. And some of you guys said he was not, so you're going to have to come up with stuff. 
Let the man win the fight. The weight is fine. Everything is fine. He's outboxing this kid. I think the guy is virtually unbeatable because of his tactical command and his physical superiority. There you go, Tua. Now, just as I say that, he finally catches a left hook from Tua, but one punch at a time. Ooh, that right to the body hurt David Tua. Lennox is hurting him with a lot of punches now. He's getting there. And I think, Larry, of the factors you mentioned, the one that I would isolate is the absence of competition. You can't get ready to fight somebody like this by fighting the kinds of guys to a fall. Yeah, they got into the position of mandatory challenger, and they froze the ball for two years. And this is too big a step up. Tua just doesn't look ready for the fight. Well, it's a desperation time. You never can a puncher like like David Tua completely out. But he's just desperate, you're right. But I, I want to say again, guys, don't be afraid to eat crow. Don't come up with excuses. When Muhammad Ali with me, I had a bunch of no. them, and a lot of people who said I, he, I was going to beat him, they came up with excuses. But when you lose, you lose. When you win, same thing. You're right, George, but we're not coming up with excuses. We're looking for explanations. There aren't any explanations. When the best man win, give it to him. And he's showing it again here, and that's why the crowd is booing. This is not an overwhelmingly popular heavyweight champion, but he might be, for this moment, a virtually unbeatable one. Well, if there's any boos, it should be for the challenger. He's not done enough to try to take the title. Against a Lennox Lewis, who in terms of his expression, the excitement he's shown, etc., is treating this like a sparring session. That's what he's doing. That's what the kind of fight you need to fight with a puncher like that. Play game, take it safely. Tua, all he has to do is just dive in with a right hand and throw a left hook with all his might. That's all he has to do. He's afraid to take a chance. Even with his trainer urging him and yelling at him, Round by round, you've got to do it. Jump in there, fire punches, flurry. This is going to be another round in which Tua will throw less than 30 punches. Tua will not have the same power in the last round that he ordinarily has. His problems in the late rounds is he didn't make Lewis work hard enough in the early rounds, George, as we were saying, so that he, he might wear the older, much bigger guy down. Jab, right cross, left hook, the beginning of blood under the left eye of Tua. That left eye is beginning to swell shut. Lennox Lewis is just toying with him. Just Pot toying shot. with him. Pot shot. Does whatever he wants to do. Right hand, left jab, right hand, right hand. It's all Lennox Lewis as we reach the end of the 11th round. Three minutes to go for Lewis to hold on to his title again. That's it. This is it. Go out there and just give me everything you got. You are a puncher, David. Minutes, you are a puncher, you understand? You can punch, but, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David Tua prepared all of his life since he was eight years old for this chance. He's been disappointing up to now. Can he make it all up in three minutes? Hundreds of fans are streaming for the exit. They've seen enough to know who's going to win the fight, and they've seen enough to know what the 12th round is likely to look like. The 11th was another vintage Lewis round, 33 out of 57, 21 of 45 jobs, two or through only 30 punches. Harold, how do you have it going to the 12th? Okay, Jeff, 107, 102, eight rounds to three, Lennox Lewis. I mean, this one's a walk in the park. I'm just waiting for two punches from David Tua. Well, a lot of people saw this as a possible style preview to Dave, I mean, to, excuse me, to Mike Tyson against Lennox Lewis. And I have to assume that Tyson at least would risk more. He would take more chances to try to make it a fight. There's no doubt about it. So this is not a style preview to Tyson Lewis because Mike would just be a heck of a lot more rambunctious. You agree, George? Tyson would be more rambunctious? This is Lennox Lewis night. I got you. Let's I'm talking about what comes down the road. Uh, this is a foregone this conclusion. Is the night, this is his night. This is his night. Maybe those people who are filling the exits now are the New Zealanders. 
Lennox Lewis could be heavyweight champ of the world for the next 10 years if he so chooses, because he only gets better. Well, what you're saying, George, really is the first thing that goes in a fighter is not his legs or his reflexes, it's his zeal to fight. It's his will to train and to fight. And he apparently still has that. He's got it all. He's got the package and it's lasted a long time. I'll tell you what else he has. He has calm, he has confidence, he has a balanced Look, life. He's bouncing his leg. This is the 12th round, isn't it? He's a tremendous he's athlete. Bouncing. And he's still aware that David Tua has this power. Still not taking any chances. He's not a fool. He has turned to his face into a swelling, bloody mask. Dead. Dead. This is really a great fight. Body shot. Jabbing and moving. And this jabbing is moving. a lights out artistic performance by a heavyweight champion who, for the moment, looks impregnable. David Tua. Widely regarded as the second best heavyweight in the world, was reduced to a sparring partner. Big time. Jim, I thought David Tua had a serious chance on the assumption that he would be the best he could possibly be for this opportunity. I couldn't have been more wrong. Yep, the winner by unanimous decision, and still. The universally recognized, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world from Great Britain, Lennox Lewis. Two hundred sixty one more punches than Tua. The Samoan born New Zealander just didn't do enough. Jabs. Lewis landing 162 more jabs than Tua and throwing more than 200 more. Lennox, it looked as though you were simply executing a blueprint in this fight. You describe what, what blueprint was. Well, it's just box analogy, simple as that. You know, you got to come with more than a power left hook to beat Lennox Lewis. That's why I said, if you come into war, you got to bring your whole arsenal, just not, not just a left hook and a haircut. So that by keeping your right hand high and watching his left hand, you felt he had no other real options. Yeah, I mean, I watched tape on him, and he doesn't throw a right hand, and I wasn't really worried about his right hand, only his left hook. And first round, I felt his left hook, and I realized, boy, what are they talking about? That's not a power left hook. I didn't think there was too much power behind it. But, I mean, he, throws, he executes as well. That's the only punch he has. You hit him with some really good stiff punches, especially your right hand. Is his uh, jaw as durable as it was wanted to be? Yeah, I would have to say he's pretty durable. You know, he can take a punch well. Uh, a couple punches I hit him with, he smiled. And I said, okay, uh, we'll receive some more then. Did he say anything to you? Because he, he didn't look anything like the David Tua who had prepared so long for this opportunity, who uh, was a tiger against many fighters. I mean, he just even didn't make the effort. I said he's never seen a boxer like Lennox Lewis. He's never been in, in against a boxer like Lennox Lewis. That's why I said, you know, it's different when you're in the ring with me. Uh, you can say what you want and what you want to accomplish, but it's a different thing when you uh, try and execute that in the ring. He had his uh, corner talking and saying this and that, David to her this, David to her that. Oh, he's never been this, he's never been that. But it's a different ball when you're in the ring by yourself. David, um... Sorry about what happened. It didn't look like David Tua. Any reason except Lennox Lewis? Uh, no excuses whatsoever tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, well, uh, first of all, I thank God that uh, you know, I wasn't seriously injured. And, uh, you know, I, I congratulate uh, uh, Lennox Lewis. He's a great champion. And, uh, you know, I uh, did the best I could. Uh, things didn't work out for me. And, uh, you know, that's the way it goes, goes uh, sometime. And uh, tonight, it was the best man.